Unlike any other car maker, Lotus doesn't ask what the customer might want, they ask what the customer can do without. And it seems we can do without quite a lot. In fact, there are only two luxuries in here. There's an electric window on the uh, driver's side and another one over there. And they're optional extras. You really do get a sense from this car that there is no waste at all, that it is basically a road-going go-car. Other than this ghastly badge here, which looks like it belongs on the note paper of a Middle Eastern hotel chain, it has lights for when it goes dark, a roof for when it rains, and these semi-slick tyres for when it doesn't. Like now. <laughs> Remember, we tested uh, a Norwalk Siege a couple of years ago. It came down here to the track and it outmaneuvered a helicopter gunship. And this one is broadly the same on the handling front. God, it's good. Where it's not the same is under the bonnet. Because they fitted the 1.8-litre Toyota engine with a supercharger. So now it has some gut to go with the G. Top speed, 148 miles an hour. Door to 60, four seconds. It's the fastest accelerating car Lotus has ever made. It's the feel of the thing that impresses most of all. I'm in sixth gear now, 60 miles an hour, foot down, and you can feel this sort of invisible wave of torque pushing you along. It's like when you're swimming and you get caught in a current. Oh, where did that come from? And you don't drown. Oh, this really is one hell of a car. To see how much of a car, I've devised a little test. This is a Ford Mustang. It's made by one of the world's biggest car firms in Detroit, Michigan, Motor City. It's got a 4.6 litre, 300 brake horsepower V8 at the front, rear wheel drive at the back, and a Stig in the middle. And he's lined up alongside a plastic car that was made by some Norfolk turnip farmers, which is being driven by a fat bloke with a dicky hip. Right, stand by for a two-lap race of our short circuit. result wasn't really surprising. Because stuff sold by the gram is always going to be more exciting than stuff sold by the pound. Saffron, for example, is more exciting than lard or charcoal or manure. As I see it, there are only three drawbacks to this car. It costs £33,000, which is quite a lot. It's pretty noisy when you go past 85, and unless you're as slim and as agile as it is, getting out can be quite, um, 
and dignified. Mostly, though, it's just a triumph of British engineering. Huge. It's a giant. Well, hang on. So what you're saying is small and light is um, is better in every way, really. <laughs> no, no, I'm not saying that. Well, that's what you're saying. No, it isn't. You kind of are. Mm. Okay, well, we're going to prove that now by finding mm. out how it does in a full lap of our test track. Yeah, now that means handing it over to our tame racing driver. Some say that his genitals are on upside down. <laughs> And that if he could be bothered, he could crack the Da Vinci Code in 43 seconds. <laughs> All we know is, he's called the Stig. <laughs> and he's off. Slingshot acceleration there, thanks to those slick tyres and the fact it doesn't weigh anything. Spearing down the first corner, look at that. Completely smooth, completely controlled, huge... Oh, wait a minute, got a bit wobbly there, but Stig's got it no problem at all. Peter a cinque anni. Peter is fine. Stig must be fluent in irrelevant Italian by now. Here we go through Chicago inside. Look at that. It's absolutely smoking. That's because there's no limited slip diff coming into the um, hammerhead. Lotus is normally understeer here. That one is as well. But he's. Oh, look, it's still smoking there. He's right on the line. Ho bisogno di un taxi. I need a taxi. No, he doesn't need a taxi. He's got this little mosquito to play with through the follow-through. That is so quick on those tyres. Now, how quick here? Very quick. This, though, is probably where the lack of ultimate power might hurt the time. Second to last corner. Here we are, hard on the brakes, flicks it in. He's right on the ragged edge, and there we go. Amazing, amazing. Now, that was almost certainly the most economical lap of our track ever, and it did it in 1.25 Point one. So look at that. Quicker than a Ferrari 575. Quicker than an M5.